Welcome back everybody, I'm Captain Sidaris and today we are continuing our journey to the awesome history of Star Wars modding. For that reason I invited another modder and longtime player of Star Wars Battlefront 2. Hello there Roboverman, how are you doing? I'm doing real good, how about you? I'm real excited to be on the show today. <laughs> That's always good to hear. I had a night shift so I'm a little bit on the tired side so maybe my English <laughs> is more on the bad side today but we will see but it's not about me i want to know everything about you who are you basically and how did you get into star wars oh star wars well i kind of grew up with star wars i saw revenge of the sith in the theaters at six years old so it goes way back till then probably before then really since i probably didn't see revenge of the sith as my first movie but yeah, I remember from that movie, like uh, the reveal that Palpatine was actually the Emperor. I was just mind blown. I had no idea in my little six year old brain. Yeah, it's interesting to start the journey with the prequels. I'm a little bit older and I watched first the original trilogy. So I, of course, know the name Palpatine. And uh, yeah, I guess he will be the bad guy in the future. But seeing it as a young pupil, basically, the first time, it's really interesting to have an entire different connection to the franchise. Yeah, I think I started with the original trilogy, but it was, it was so long ago, it just kind of, all, it's all blended together, really. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Especially if you binge watch them, it's one big mess, I guess. <laughs> But we are basically here for modding and Battlefront 2 and yeah, how did you get into that? Um, Battlefront modding, well, I kind of started with my PS2 in the early, early years of me playing video games. I wasn't allowed to play in the living room where the PS2 was, so I just have to watch my dad play Battlefront 2. <laughs> And then eventually I was able, allowed to play it. And so I got to play Battlefront 2 and I played and the, and the uh, original Battlefront as well. I played that thing for many, many hours, hour long, many hours long sessions. And I just kind of played it nonstop, really. And then eventually I just kept getting these ideas on what, what the things I would change about the game would be if I were a developer or something. And so like the, like you shoot a rocket at an AI dude and I was like, they should just dodge out of the way. Why don't they do that? <laughs> or like an, in a map where there's like ledges and stuff you can jump over, the AI wouldn't jump over those ledges. And I'm like, why don't the AI jump over those ledges? They should jump over those. And so that's kind of how I got into modding. Just kind of those starting with the ideas. Was this your first experience with modding or did you do any tech stuff before? Well, this was, this is like the ancient days of me being like 12 years old. So I had no idea modding even existed back then. But eventually I saw YouTube videos that there were mods and there were like maps and stuff that people had made. And I was like, oh, that's really cool. And so I just made lists and stuff of things that I would change, change about the characters or AI or... I didn't really get into mapping stuff because I thought the maps in the game were already really good. So I didn't really have complaints about those, but it was mostly the AI that I wanted to improve on. And so I eventually downloaded the mod tools. I couldn't get them to work at all. And so like, it took me like many months before I could able to actually get those mod tools to work. And then I just started playing around with the code editor, not the code, but like the, uh, it's called a ODF, but you basically you just change values in the game and then things happen based on those things like changing the character's movement speed or changing a fire rate of a certain weapon, things like that. Just starting with those tiny little edits and then they all stack up on top of each other 
and make a completely different experience from what the original game was. And then that's what that's what my mod Homefront is. Just all those changes culminated together into one mod, as well as assets and stuff that I've borrowed from the community. And so, by the way, Homefront, that's my mod. Yeah, I wanted to ask you to give us a short summary about that. For example, when and how did this project start? Was it just the combination of all the different plug uh, plugins, all the different assets and changes you created and you called it Homefront? Or was there a general idea behind that version of your modding progress? Yeah, I originally started by playing what other people up other people's mods were like one of them was battlefront extreme which is just a more intense version of battlefront gameplay with extra units and stuff and i was like oh i could do that with all the things i've been messing with in the mod tools and so i did that and i was like wait but i can i can try and do my own version of this and you know i just started a tweaking weapons and it's not really much of an idea behind it to be honest it's just kind of ooh this would be cool if battlefront had this in it let's put that in and so i made my own custom eras called like normally it's just clone wars and galactic civil war but i added my own version of those things homefront clone wars homefront galactic civil war And so they add different units like shadow troopers, which aren't usually in the normal game, and magna guards, stuff like that. Just expanding the, what the units are in the game based on the existing lore and Star Wars and what I feel like would have been fun for the game itself. And I also added other things as well. I added a new game mode called Jar Jar's Revenge. And what it does is, you know, there's this thing in the Star Wars community where it's like, what if Jar Jar was the secret Sith Lord? And so I, I gave Jar Jar a lightsaber and made his abilities extremely overpowered and turned that into a game mode where it's Jar Jar versus an entire army of clones or stormtroopers. And Jar Jar just destroys them all pretty much. And it's actually really fun in multiplayer because when you actually have humans hunt, trying to hunt down Sith Lord Jar Jar, it turns into this kind of monster hunt mode where you're like, a, it's kind of scary even. It's like you're just a random guy and then Jar Jar walks up to you and going, excuse me. Yeah, it's amazing. I just played it prior to this interview. <laughs> it's really, really funny too have charger and these crazy abilities yeah yeah it's actually really fun with a group of four people we've just been like i occasionally get together with some friends and we play jar jar's revenge on multiplayer where one person is jar jar and and the people hunting him just have to adapt to the player's play style like they'll sometimes hide camp by the medical droids to heal themselves over time so When you're playing against Jar Jar, you just have to destroy all the medical droids in the map so that he can't do that. And you're just shouting out command post names like, he's over at command post two. No, he's headed towards command post three. And then we just kind of try and trap him. I found it very interesting that you decided to give him basically the, the normal health system and not the hero system where they can't use the droids. It completely changes the gameplay. Yeah. Part of that is that it's tied to the heroes. When you're spawn as a hero, you have to have like a certain moin a certain amount of points in order to play as the hero. So if you're just spawning as Jar Jar, you wouldn't normally get that. You wouldn't get those hero timer rules and stuff. So it's just a normal unit. Although I would like him to to have like a a voice line where he spawns where he's like Disa Jar Jar Binks I'm gonna kill you all <laughs> or something like that that would be hilarious but I haven't figured out how to do that unfortunately well AI makes it maybe possible in the near future to include more lines in that sense oh yeah that would be awesome 
a quick <laughs> idea just popped into my head. Maybe include a hero version of of Charger when you maybe kill enough uh, different units. Oh, it, and even more powerful. <laughs> yeah, if you are on a killing spree. That actually sounds. I'll call him Ultimate Jar Jar Binks. Exactly, something like that. Make him extremely tall. He just becomes like twice his normal height. And then he stomps on enemies, making shock waves. And did you work on this entire project alone? Yeah, pretty much, except for a few instances. Um, I have a buddy who I talk to on Discord a lot. His name is Pierce Needle, and he has helped me a lot with 3D models for my mods. And my Homefront isn't the only project I've worked on. I've also did another one called Furries vs. Villains. But in Homefront, he did, he did the ed edits to the Stormtroopers with their pauldrons and stuff, and the Clone Troopers as well. And he did a few animations, like the B1 battle droid shooting animation, and the purge trooper animation as well, and some others too, I think. But yeah, he's been pretty awesome when it comes to getting ass, doing assets and stuff. He's pretty pretty skilled when it comes to that. And uh, in my other mod, he played a much larger role, because. In Furries vs. Villains, I didn't really have any skill when it comes to 3D models and getting those type of assets, so I've been relying on the community, the ones that they've released, in order to get do the things that I've wanted to do in Homefront. But when it, in Furries vs. Villains, it's a completely different mod where you're you have two sides, video game villains versus cute furry characters. And so I wouldn't have been able to d get those assets from all these other games and such if it weren't for him. And this was a, a side project? My other mod, it was, it took about six months, I think, to make that one. And it was, like, this is, I believe it was, I made that a couple of years ago. So it's been a while. Furries vs. Villains is kind of the most collaborative project I've worked on, I think. It had voice acting from some of my friends and a, a lot of stuff from Pierce Needle, like I said before. And it's also had a custom 3D model from my other friend, Nito. And he did some ports as well, such as the Diglett and the Space Marine. And so I really haven't worked on a project that involved more people than Furries vs. Villains. And that's that's what I think was really special about that mod. And I think it, I think it shows just because it feels like its own world, really. It's kind of funny, kind of lacking polish, but I really think it's, I really think it's pretty, pretty awesome. It looks like such a fun project which you just enjoy for a, a nice LAN party session. Yeah, I kind of enjoyed making it a lot as well because I did live streams in the process of making it. And so I just sat down at my computer. I'm like, hmm, I'm going to do this for Furries vs. Villains today. And then I did it over stream. And then people would join the stream and was like, hey, what's up? And I tried to get things to work and Senpai would Senpai Pierce Needle would send me models during the stream and where we're just struggling trying to get the tail on this character to work properly and then someone in the stream would draw fan art of the of the that person's tail getting stuck to the floor. I'd like to work on a project like that again at some point. It always amazes me how how close the Battlefront 2 community is working together. The Oh, such a nice bunch what I hear from you models. It's really, really nice. Yeah, we've always kind of, like on the forums and uh, Discord Game Toast server, everyone's always trying to help each other out with whatever they're doing. It's like someone's like, I need help. How do I do X and X and Y and Z? 
someone will usually have an answer and offer assistance wherever with whatever it is they're trying to do. I guess especially as a, a new beginner in the modding world, it's very helpful to have such an amazing community behind you. But I guess still you had many problems during the development. Can you remember a few big ones? Oh yeah, there there's always problems all the time. <laughs> But you know, whenever there's a problem, there's usually like if you usually there's a moment where like ugh, I I don't like this. But then you're and then you bang your head against the wall trying to figure it out, and it's like oh wait, uh, that wasn't as bad as I thought it was gonna be. <laughs> Or it just doesn't work at all. <laughs> But, you know. Um, let me think of an example. Like, getting the mod tools to work was something I struggled with a little bit. Trying to get sounds to work in the mod was also kind of a learning curve. I felt like I was doing everything right. But then it just wasn't working like it was supposed to. But eventually, out of random thin air it started working and i was like oh i guess i guess it works now i guess i don't have to worry about that anymore and it's been working hopefully it doesn't stop working <laughs> once you have the knowledge and stuff it's usually usually make things a bit easier but there is a factor where it's just like these mod tools don't know al don't always do what they're supposed to do sometimes they just have random glitches Yeah, that's the, the strange thing in development and also one of the reasons I don't go that deep into development myself, that it's sometimes not predictable how software will react. Sometimes you work on a problem for hours, you don't change anything and out of the blue it works. Nobody knows why, but it does and yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for wasting myself for so many hours. Yep, that's 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 Battlefront 2 modding. <laughs> that's everywhere. It doesn't matter if you develop a website or anything else. It's always there. Oh yeah. Lingering in the dark. And maybe were there any features you would have liked to include? Oh yeah, I do. I would have liked to make custom Jedi animations, but I'm not that skilled enough to be able to do that yet. But Jedi animations, like for example, Kiari Mundi, he just uses Luke Skywalker's basic three attacks. That's something that's always bothered me as a as, as a little kid playing this game. I was like, why is why is he Luke Skywalker? He's supposed to be his own dude. So, I would have liked to give him some new animations. And other characters as well, like the Magna Guard and Temple Guards. But if I ever do get into animation, I would like to do that at some point. It's just that I, I really think they sh if if we're adding all these crazy units to Battlefront 2, they should they should have custom animation because that's what they did in the base game. It just feels like it just feels incomplete without that. So, if there's one thing I'd like to include, that's what it is. And also, I do want to add more game modes. Like, uh, I've had this idea for tower defense game mode, where you would be like defending an imperial shuttle from rebels with turrets that you place on the ground. Ooh, that would be an amazing game mode. And I think that might be really fun. Or Do you think this is doable? I think this is very doable. Like with uh, we, we could have waves spawn with timers, because that's something that the campaign mode does, is that they have timers in the code for when objectives are complete. And so you can just have a timer for a unit, a wave of units spawn at, and they can just, you could have them just go to an Imperial shuttle or something like that and have them destroy it. And with the tower defense mode, I would probably make it so that they couldn't target the player. They would only target the shuttle or the building or whatever it is they're trying to destroy. And your only weapons would be the turret to try and stop them. And maybe you can 
you can like as you get more and more kills you can unlock different units with different kinds of turrets that you can place down and then you just be able to get more and more turrets as the round progresses i think that might be a cool game mode definitely i would love to play that especially if you combine that for multiplayer or for co-op especially it would be amazing i'm one of those guys who still hosts uh, LAN parties, so I would love that. Yeah, LAN parties. I do those too on occasion. They're pretty awesome. It's a special experience to enjoy your games. Yeah, it would be cool to play those types of modes. And I, of course, also am interested, but I am most proud of what feature or unit you included in your mod. It's your favorite, your baby. Jar Jar's Revenge, of course, but other than that, it would probably be, I don't know, all of it. <laughs> it's like a, you know, I just, it's just a kind of a project that I continuously work on, really. It's like, like you don't stop working on the, the mod, it just keeps going on and on and getting bigger and bigger and bigger as time progresses. And the scope is just always increasing. Like, ooh, in the future, I'll add new eras. I'll add new maps. I'll add new units and animations and game modes. You know, it just keeps on going. One thing I have to mention is also the reason I contacted you initial. One guy basically who watched another interview of Battlefront 2 mentioned you included a grappling hook and he's basically flabbergasted how you created that. He never saw that in any other mod. Oh, the grappling hook. I believe that was a, that was a community made asset. I believe, I'm not sure if this is the right name, but I think it was Mile High Guy, I think that created that and released on Game Toast. I don't know if that's the right name. It might've been someone else. But it's a it's a community made asset for Battlefront 2. A lot of assets like that are released on Game Toast forums website, and I managed to include them in the mod. Is it very easy to include different assets, different plugins, basically, or are they sometimes really not meant to work together? Well, I guess it depends on what you're using it for. The way it works is it's a code, is it's code you insert into the game in, and you give a unit a weapon that uses that code. And so depending on what you want the weapon to do, you can have it do pretty much anything on, like you can have it move the player, you can have it respawn a player, and stuff like that. Stuff like that can be really cool if you're, like I'm experimenting on, in Homefront I'm kind of experimenting with like if you spawn as a certain playable unit can the ai use different weapons from the player so that they can use their weapons a bit smarter and more like how a player would but not have it affect the player in any way whatsoever and so like it depends on how you use it i guess like what your intentions are like you make the grappling hook that and it makes something pretty cool with the code and so i'm kind of experimenting with that sort of coding technique and seeing what's possible it's always good to have a big library of assets and stuff you can put into your work and experiment basically i also saw that you did something for me at least very rare you limited the torpedoes and the missiles a fighter has oh yeah I played a, a space battle basically and r ran out of torpedoes and at first I thought, huh, okay, uh, just wait until they uh, respawn basically in my torpedo launcher, but no, they didn't. I ran out. It's it's changes the gameplay and I like stuff like that. Yeah, the uh, the intention with that was that I thought on uh, space battles, like if you're just playing in single player. You know, the space battles are kind of just, you go fly over to the enemy ship and blow up all the systems in your bomber 
and then you win and it's just a step-by-step -step process really just just kind of an easy easy victory and I was like huh that this this could this could this doesn't seem right I feel like this this should be a bit more harder a bit more challenging and so now you have limited limited ammo and I would like to improve on the space as well also what makes it a little bit harder is when you then run out of torpedoes you land and the AI is really tough they will kick your ass out of the ship again <laughs> yeah they do they really do like some people have said that the AI is a bit too hard in the home front which I understand they usually are playing on elite difficulty though so I'm just like you, you could turn it down to normal if you want <laughs> yeah you're just so used that you basically land and destroy the ship from within without any problem if there isn't any human opponent yeah one of the things i wanted to do is just make the ai more challenging to deal with because in the vanilla game they're just like they just kind of let you shoot them they're like oh you can shoot me i don't mind exactly <laughs> now you have to actually take cover and stuff another thing i noticed that you offer a readme file where you recommend different maps and other mods to include for this project. But I wondered, did you ever consider combine everything into one package so the, the user only has to download one thing? Well, I would, but those maps are made by a whole bunch of different people and different authors, and I don't really want to kind of steal their work you know it's like those are stuff that they created and i'm only paying homage to those maps but i want to include more maps and stuff don't get me wrong that you have to steal <laughs> i didn't want to phrase it that way that you just take their content and put it into your work just have a, a bundle or um, ask them if you can use them maybe but the download size and stuff like that it's gonna be a massive mod. Like, I want to eventually have this mod so that it has a whole bunch of different maps and stuff included. And then you'll be able to also download these maps other by other people. It's already a massive mod. So I, maybe I could do something like that. Maybe just uh, kind of top 10 from other creators and you spotlight them basically and give them credits, of course. Yeah, although there, since the that readme file is a bit, is a bit long to read, I'm like download, download the improved sides mod, I, I download, the AI hero script, download all these mod maps. That's a lot for new people, who are just installing the mod. So I do see value to that. <laughs> it is a little bit, and also, you mentioned the AI hero script. I found it a little bit confusing, so I didn't include it because there are so many different files and there isn't a real explanation from the original author what those different files basically do. So yeah, I thought, okay, I just played the vanilla version. All right. I think I might include a, an explanation of those files in that readme text file. So hopefully it won't be as confusing, <laughs> but yeah, I like, I like to try and make it as easy as possible for people just trying to play the mod, which is why I include those text files and stuff. Yeah, I really love it. I really love that you do that and that you also basically point into the direction where players get more content and a better experience, but still use your mods. I really like that. But I guess you don't have to fear big mod files if you consider all the big developer studios produce games now which are which have a crazy amount of uh, hardware and disk requirement yeah yeah 100 gigabytes is nothing today uh, in the olden days of the ps3 video games took like three hours to install two gigabytes on assassin's creed 2 the game's like two gigabytes and yet for some reason the the, on when a PS4 era came along, it's like 64 gigabytes, and like, and I'm just scratching my head. I was like, this does not look like it's 64 gigabytes when PS3 was like three to five gigabytes. 
Yeah, and I always compare it. How many games can I install on my hard disk? I have one terabyte for games basically dedicated. And if I can only install four games, I really don't like that. Sorry guys, I have more. <laughs> I, I want more uh, choices if I play something in the evening. That's right. I tend to play I tend to play older games anyways. So it's not it doesn't affect me too much. Like my friend and I will will do speed runs of Mario 64 and Mario 63, which is an ancient Flash game based on Mario 64 and 2D, and we'll just go on PS2. We, we, we enjoy the retro games. It's always good to hear that younger people, not from my generation, are also enjoying those old games. Speaking also about different games, did you play the other Battlefront games, and especially the re-release of the classic titles? I played Elite Squadron on my PSP, and I loved that game so much. Uh, it would be better than Battlefront 2 Classic, but except for the fact that it was on PSP, you only have one joystick on that system. And imagine playing a shooter game with one joystick. It's not great. It's like playing on the Nintendo 64 controller. And so, if Elite Squadron were on a console, with two joysticks or on the PC, it would probably be the best Battlefront game, to be honest, if it were made specifically for that those systems. Because the Galactic Conquest, it was very unique compared to Battlefront 2. Although, unfortunately, I believe the ground maps were a bit small, but I think that's a PSP limitation as well. So if it were made for whatever console was available at the time, I think it would be a whole lot better. And also, I have not played Renegade Squadron, and I have not played the, uh, the, the, the EA Battlefronts. Not really, except for the 2015 one, Battlefront 1, at my friend's house a couple times. We did, like, survival mode. It was an alright game, but it's not something that I would want to play by myself. It's kind of something that I would just play with friends, as is with most games for me, to be honest. I usually don't play any game just by myself unless it's modding Battlefront 2 because I like to feel like I'm doing something that isn't just just playing a video game. I want to I want to have an impact on what's going on in the game. So that's why I like Battlefront modding is because it's playful, but it also feels like I'm progressing in a way that is interesting to me. I like doing those those types of projects and stuff. And also, Classic Collection. I would like to... I might play Classic Collection. If I can get mods to work on it, I don't know if Era Mods will be able to work on Classic Collection. I think there's a patch for it, but I'm not sure. I'm just kind of waiting to see on that one if the multiplayer... If they update the multiplayer to be more responsive. And if it continues to be viable to mod on Classic Collection, I'd like to see what direction they take that because it will affect on whether I get it or not. Because mods are kind of the most important thing when it comes to Battlefront 2 for me. Because if it weren't for the mods, I would not be in into the franchise really right now. Unless we're, we were living in the alternate universe where I just make be like, ah, oh, they're not making any Battlefront games, I'll just make it myself, and then just become some sort of unreal developer, just making the next Battlefront game in my basement. Yeah, it sounds like a good plan. So please make us a Battlefront 3. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's something that I occasionally fantasize about, and then I'm like, no, that's way too big for me ever to do on my own. Yeah, you need a team behind that one. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, I I did sort of work on a project for that was just me by myself and I made a game I released on Steam. It wasn't like Battlefront modding. It was just, it felt more like actual work than something playful cuz you cuz when you're just building a game from scratch, you know, you just have to get to the point where it's like like normally 
people see making games is like, ah, it's like Mario Maker. You just make, you just put things in a level and they all work together, right? But when you're actually developing the basics of what Mario Maker would be, you know, you just have to, you have to have everything planned out ahead of time. And it's like, oh, this is, this is too much for my brain to handle. <laughs> Especially when you're just by yourself. Yeah. It can get, I guess, very frustrating, especially if you're alone and can't ask anybody else. Yeah. <laughs> well, then, I would say we close it slowly off, but before we end it off, I want, of course, to know a little bit about the future of Homefront. What are your next updates about, basically? So the the Homefront version that's currently listed on ModDB is labeled as the final last version. Now that's not exactly true. I originally thought that version 1.6.1 would also be the final version, but then I released the final version some months later, and then I kind of took a very long hiatus on the mod after that so to work on other projects. And now I'm back into Battlefront modding. And so I have all the files for Homefront still, but I'm kind of rebuilding the mod from the ground up because I really didn't like how my file structure was organized. It was all organized, not at all. It was very, very haphazardly thrown. Everything is just held together by toothpicks and shoestrings in the mod, honestly. So I'm just kind of taking the opportunity and comb to comb over all those issues by just rebuilding everything from the ground up. And so I'm also reworking all the units and stuff to hopefully make them more stand out from each other. Like I felt like a lot of the units were just kind of a bit copies of each other. Like for example, the Republic Commando and the Standard Trooper like the Republic Commando is just like, he just has a rifle and a sniper and a grenade launcher and a grenade that's more powerful. And I was like, that, this seems really similar to some of the other units you can already play as. Why would you play as those other units if you can just use the Republic Commando? So I kind of want to separate them from each other a bit more in that way and have things have a more specialized role for you to play as. Some things are just a bit too not stand out ish <laughs> then i'd like to revisit those things and polish them a bit more and so that's what i'm up to right now i think that's in every project basically that the polishing aspect would be nice but doesn't have to be i think at the moment your mod is really really nice so doesn't need it but of course improving file structures and everything is a big bonus for the future if you still want to continue working on the mod in the future. Yeah. I will know I will at least make one more map because I feel like the the maps that I've made are pretty... They work really well with the style of gameplay that Homefront has. Like, they, they're just really big maps with giant vehicles and stuff like that, but not too open. And I think those types of map work really well with what Homefront is. And so I'd like to add more of those and have them be in the next update. Completely forgot to ask you, how did you come up with the name Homefront? Oh, okay. <laughs> so whenever people are first looking at Homefront, I'll often get the response. It was like, oh, this is based on the game called Homefront, right? And I'm like, no, 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 wait. It's not that, I swear. And so I had, when I was coming up with the name, I had no idea that some other game was already using that as their title. So I just looked at the names Battlefront. And you know, I, I had been playing this game for since I was like very young. And so I was like, ah, yes, it's like a second home to me, basically. And so Battlefront, Homefront, those names sound very similar to each other. They should work together, right? And so that's why the name is what it is. I feel like I might rename it to Star Wars Galactic Homefront so that it just separates itself from whatever that other game is, to be honest, because I don't, I don't want it to be compared to whatever that is, 
whatever that other game is. I can totally understand that. I had sadly the same thoughts in my head. Hmm, is it inspired by the Homefront game? I never played it, but is it? <laughs> but yeah. On the other side, your explanation is, is very good. So maybe just write it into the, the readme or in the description of the mod and I think it would be also fine. But Galactic Homefront also has a nice ring. <laughs> yeah, I might put it in one of those text files or in the description. We'll see. I'm glad you brought up the name though, because that's something that I've I've been wanting to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just thought, hey, we talked about so much, but not about the name, which is unique. And especially if you consider there is a different game out there, which is coding itself that way. Like, uh, the, people will forget about that game, and they'll they'll for Homefront the game the the mod will stand the test of time. <laughs> Oh, definitely. The, the real game, Homefront, was really forgettable, so <laughs> never mind that. <laughs> then I always ask my guests, uh, what are your wishes for a new official home, uh, Homefront, new official Battlefront game? Honestly, I just kind of want... I just kind of want the original classic games, a continuation of those, because the gameplay just really works in those. You know, the EA games, they they didn't really feel at all what I expected out of Battlefront. I just want it to feel more like the classic games, and that would, that would make me very happy. Me too. <laughs> I like the newer games in a sense. It's something different, but it's not Battlefront to me. Yeah, exactly. And I guess you and all the other people out there saw the amazing trailer for Battlefront 3 and we wanted that. Oh yeah, we did. <laughs> I think there's a way that people can play the leaked version of it, but I, I'd like to try it sometime and see how it actually did play, because I think there is a way that people can play the leaked version. Yeah, it's not that hard. Um... There is a Battlefront 2 mod, which is basically recreating the game in the Battlefront 2 engine, but they also have links on their Discord, how you play basically the original leaked version, or at least they can point you into the direction. <laughs> oh, I wasn't aware of that. Well, I knew about the Battlefront 3 legacy mod, but I didn't know that, that there was like a... Like, it was like, oh, they're just like, oh, just go over here. You can play the leaked Battlefront 3. And it's like, what? You could do that? It's not that easy, I guess, but they played it and they have community events for the, the leaked version. In some sense, the multiplayer is working. At least I saw everything in, in their streams. I don't want to promote that much. It's a leaked version, but I think... The fan base has to know there is something out there which they could touch in some way at least. That's really cool. I think I might do more research on that. No guarantees. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, especially the time aspect in in everybody's life is yeah hard to manage, especially when you create something. Yeah. Okay, then I would say my last question is. If somebody out there would like to help you on your journey to create Galactic Homefront, where can people reach you? Uh, my preferred method is I like to talk on Discord. Discord is just my favorite place to talk to people. I'm in the Game Toast Discord server. I'm in the Battlefront Remastered server as well, I think. And so just send me a DM if you're in one of those servers. My DMs are open. You can also contact me on ModDB, or you could just send me pictures of Sonic the Hedgehog. That'll be pretty nice too. <laughs> <laughs> That's always nice. I'll know what it means. <laughs> so then I would say this is the part of the video where I open the mic to you. Is there anything you would like to add? Anything we missed? Um, if you're wanting to get into Battlefront 2 modding, just Join the join the Game Toast Discord server and the look at the Game Toast website as well. It's where I learned pretty much everything I know about modding and I wouldn't be able to do pretty much any of the stuff I've done 
if it weren't for the people who've already done those things that I've wanted to do. And so if you're wanting to get into it, you can just DM modders or you can just look at look at the tutorials. It'll be a difficult learning curve, but you'll eventually get where you're trying to go. Yeah, like I said, it's amazing how nice this community basically is and how they embrace basically new new models out there and help them. A really big thank you in general for the entire community here. And of course, a, a big thank you to you for creating this amazing mod. And I can't wait to play more of it in the future. Ah, oh, thank you. I really like that. It, it's like a small community. It feels like a, a small town. You know, we live in a world where like the mainstream websites like Twitter or uh, Tumblr or all those social media websites, they are massive. That's like 90% of where people go for social media and stuff like that. But if you just have a niche community that's off to the side, that feels small, it makes a big difference, I feel like. Like, it's like you're not just one voice in a sea of other voices. You just, you, you're just kind of... It makes it more personal. Yeah. Well done. Thank you for joining me. And yeah, like I said, I can't wait to hear from you in the future again, not only about the next update, but also how you decide what name you will choose. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for having me on the interview. I really, I really like that you're doing this sort of thing because I don't think we've ever had interviews that I'm aware of in the battlefront area space for modders. And so I don't think we've had that. Oh, s sadly in, in the entire modding community it's a rare thing and i thought hey we have to archive your amazing work in some sense at least because platforms die left and right yeah I, I will definitely be looking at your other interviews as well because i'm very interested in what other people are up to yeah that, that's the other side aspect basically we can learn from each other and hear different opinions different methods of doing stuff it's always good Especially learning from the past is always good. But yeah, I really would say that's it for this video. Leave us a comment, tell us what you think about the game, and of course, play the game. Until next time.